The past four years have seen little change when it comes to GPUs. The arrival of the Radeon HD 7970 for AMD was a big deal back in January of 2012 as we saw the birth of the GCN 1.0 architecture and crucially the first step to the 28 nanometer design process. The 7970 was a huge step forward from the 6970 before it and at the time was on average 40% faster. Likewise, for NVIDIA, the GeForce GTX 680 marked the transition down from 40 nanometers to 28 nanometers, ushering in improved thermal performance and power consumption. Upon release, the GTX 680 was faster, less power hungry, and quieter than the 7970, which would see AMD release an overclocked 7970 called the Gigahertz Edition three months later. Since then, the 7970 was rebadged as the Radeon R9 280X in 2013, whilst AMD pushed their design further to create the 290X, which was later rebadged as the 390X with twice as much VRAM. Finally, AMD reached the limits of what was possible with their design on the 28 nanometer process when they created the monstrous Fury X with 4096 SPUs in 2015. Nvidia 2 has been constrained to the 28 nanometer process, though they have been a little more productive in my opinion. The Kepler architecture was mostly dumped in late 2014 to make way for the new Maxwell GPUs which were more efficient and more powerful. One might think that this change to a more efficient architecture was a good thing for Nvidia fans, but for many the opposite seemed true. The problem started when gamers began to notice a rather large discrepancy in performance between Kepler and Maxwell, most noticeably in modern GameWorks titles such as The Witcher 3. Some went as far to say Nvidia was deliberately gimping performance on the previous generation GPUs in an effort to force the consumer to upgrade. I think that theory has mostly been debunked now and instead it seems much more likely that Nvidia has simply forgotten their older generation GPUs when it comes to performance optimizations, focusing their efforts solely on Maxwell. Given Nvidia is in the business of making money by selling new products and not keeping secondhand shoppers happy, this makes sense from a business perspective. However, if they were deliberately handicapping the older products, that would be another issue. But if they're simply forgetting about them, then that's the pitfall of buying their products. But is it? Can you really expect your ultra expensive shiny new Nvidia GPU to be near useless once the next generation lands? I've seen plenty of articles and videos that compare Kepler based GPUs using new and old drivers to Maxwell with mixed results. Yes, there are instances where Kepler GPUs such as the GTX 780 fall well behind the new GTX 970 in some modern games, but it is hard to pin that entirely on the driver. After all, Maxwell is a more efficient architecture, and under the right conditions, considerably more efficient in fact. If the GTX 970 was merely a rebadged 780 with more VRAM, oh bloody hell, I've gone and done it. I mentioned VRAM when talking about the GTX 970. Uh, where was I? Right. If the GTX 970 was merely a rebadged 780 with more VRAM, then you wouldn't expect or accept discrepancies in performance when playing modern titles. Anyway, let's just get to the point. Very soon, consumers will have access to the next generation AMD and Nvidia GPUs. For many, longevity will play a key role in their purchasing decision, so I wanted to find out the truth and I didn't want to do it by comparing two different Nvidia architectures. Instead, I'll be taking the GeForce GTX 680 and comparing it to the Radeon HD 7970. For testing, I picked 9 games from around the time the GTX 680 and HD 7970 were released in 2012, all of which were popular choices for benchmarking these GPUs, so we can safely assume both camps are well optimised. Following that, I then went ahead and benchmarked 9 more recently released games, most of them very recently such as Rise of the Tomb Raider, Black Ops 3, Far Cry Primal, and The Division for example. Once the dust settles, I'll be looking at how the two compared in the older games compared to the newer games to see if there's any performance discrepancies. Both graphics cards will be tested using the default AMD and Nvidia specifications, and please note we are using the original 7970, not the overclocked Gigahertz Edition card. I'm not particularly interested in which card is faster, but rather the performance margins that separate them and if they change over time. First up, let's look at the older games from around 2012. Please note, I will be focusing on the 1080p performance, but I have also included the 1440p results for those interested. The 7970 was 7% faster in Batman Arkham City when comparing the average frame rate. This time, the GTX 680 was just 3% faster in Battlefield 3. Now, when testing with Crisis 2, we find the 7970 is now 3% faster, though it did suffer from a considerably lower minimum frame rate. The 7970 stays on top for Dirt Showdown with a 4% lead. The GTX 680 hits the lead once again, winning by a 7% margin in Hard Reset. This time the GTX 680 was 7% faster in Max Payne 3. Man, I had some fun with that game all those years ago. 
Metro 2033 was taken by the 7970 by a rather decisive 17% margin. Using Total War Shogun 2, we found that the 7970 was 13% faster. Finally, rounding out the old school gaming is another favourite, Stalker, Call of Pripyat. This test resulted in a dead heat with the cards tied at 65 FPS each. Now for the newer titles. These are all modern titles that I use regularly to benchmark new GPUs and they were mostly selected at random. The GTX 680 was 3% faster in Battlefield 3 and surprise surprise, it was again 3% faster when testing the 4th and current instalment. These are the most shocking results seen so far. Here the 7970 was found to be 33% faster than the GTX 680. Could this be a sign of what's to come? Yet another strong win for the 7970, this time when testing F1 2015. Here it's able to get 14% ahead of the GTX 680. The Far Cry Primal results are a bit mixed. The 7970 was on average 2% faster despite being 15% slower when comparing the minimum frame rate. Again, this time when testing Just Cause 3, we find that the 7970 was faster on average but much slower when comparing the minimum frame rate. Star Wars Battlefront provides another big win for the 7970 as it was found to be 16% faster when comparing the average frame rate. The 7970 stayed ahead in the division, leading the GTX 680 by a 9% margin. It was neck and neck in the new Tomb Raider game with both GPUs delivering the same 39 FPS. That said, the 7970 was 3% faster when comparing the minimum frame rate. Last but certainly not least is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Unsurprisingly, the GTX 680 takes the win here as it was 8% faster when comparing the average frame rates. Some of you might have noticed how poorly the GTX 680 performed in some of the modern titles when compared to the 7970 at the 1440p resolution in games such as Far Cry Primal, Just Cause 3, The Division and Rise of the Tomb Raider. Although I didn't discuss the 1440p results as these cards are better suited for 1080p gaming, I believe there's a simple explanation for this and it has nothing to do with display drivers. Instead, I think this rapid decline in performance is likely down to the limited VRAM buffer of the 680. By default, the 680 was paired with only a 2GB VRAM buffer, while the 7970 was afforded a little more breathing room here with its 3GB buffer. Compounding this issue was the 256-bit wide memory bus, which limited the 680 to 192GB per second, whereas the 7970's 384-bit bus enabled a bandwidth of 264GB per second. This almost 40% increase in bandwidth means the 7970 can chew through its buffered data faster. Now that we have all the numbers, let's find out what the overall results are. Looking to the old games, we find that both cards delivered virtually the same performance on average. The GeForce GTX 680 averaged 69 FPS, making it just 1% slower than the Radeon HD 7970, which averaged 70 FPS. For those wondering, the minimums were much the same, though the GTX 680 did come out on top here by a single frame, 45 FPS versus 44 FPS. Jumping to the new games, we find similar results, though this time the GTX 680 was 5.5% slower than the 7970, 51 FPS versus 54 FPS. Meanwhile, the minimum frame rates average out to be the same at 40 FPS each. So the margins are far from significant, despite growing 5 times larger in favour of the 7970 for the newer games. Looking back to the older games, the GTX 680 was slower in 5 of the 9 tested, for the new games it was slower in 7 of the 9 games tested, so take away from that what you will. With the margins being as close as they are, it's hard to draw a solid conclusion and I'm not sure I'd be willing to claim that AMD GPUs do in fact age better. The small percentage change that we are seeing here can very well be down to the fact that for the most part, AMD has been able to get away with very minor changes in design since debuting the GCN 1.0 architecture back in 2012. Not just that, but today their current generation R7 370 series still uses the original GCN 1.0 architecture, so you have to imagine AMD is still optimising for it. Nvidia on the other hand has little incentive to keep optimising for Kepler, and I'm sure the 4 year old GeForce GTX 680 is no longer on the driver team's radar unless something goes horribly wrong. This doesn't do anyone who invested $1000 in the GeForce GTX Titan 2 years ago any favours, but I'm sure anyone with that much money to throw around has since moved on, or plans to shortly once these next gen cards land. Having said all that, we see no real evidence that Nvidia's older GPUs have slid significantly when compared to their AMD counterparts, so this all seems like a bit of a non-issue. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Hardware Unboxed. I'm your host Matt as always, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time.